for the dream team of teenage girls everywhere. And they're our inside story for Christmas weekend, 1989. They're a musical group that's turning into a major industry. In addition to their records, they have deals for merchandise, TV shows, and movies, and the unwavering adoration of hundreds of thousands of teen and preteen fans. I think we just, it, we have sort of a, a hunger for the scream of the crowd. We get up there, we're excited, the fans start going crazy. We're just really, you know, five guys from Boston. They are just about the hottest thing in show business. Billboard magazine has just named them the top new pop artist of 1989. Their multi-platinum album, Hangin' Tough, has grossed more than $50 million. Their six-month tour, Screaming Room Only, is virtually sold out. No, me? No, I'm not. I'm definitely not the sex symbol of the group. If 16-year-old Joe McIntyre is not the new kids on the block sex symbol, then 18-year-old Jordan Knight is. Joe and Jordan, brother John, Danny, and Donnie are all sexy if you ask their legions of female fans, many of them still waiting for their first training bras. It's this shrieking army of teen and sub-teen girls who boosted the new kids on the block to the very top of the music business. There's a lot of, you know, girls who team up and just, they, it's like, it's like that's, that's their number yeah. one priority to scheme, you know, just to get at us. And if the girls have gotten them up there, these five kids from Boston have had a lot of help from an expert management team that's developed their music and built their image along with a mighty merchandising machine. So far, I'd have to say Joey T-shirts. It's probably the hottest item so far tonight. <laughs> I never saw this picture in my life. And if the new kids have a magic, it is that they stay close to their fans. Backstage at the Boston Garden last month, kids and fans could be found wandering all over the place. Houston, the dog, becomes an instant celebrity simply because John and Houston are inseparable. And the new kids are nice kids, too. They're accessible, and they remember the garden before they were the sellout attraction. We couldn't afford tickets. New kids can be smart kids as well, and when they're turned out in front of the jaded paparazzi of Hollywood, they can give as good as they get for the publicity that keeps those albums selling. Wherever they go, you can be sure a camera is nearby. I think it's the tip of the iceberg right now because I think uh, we're still growing and we're still maturing, and as we grow, our fans will grow. If the new kids seem to have their feet on the ground as they dance, spin, hop, and slither across America, it's because back in Boston there's an institution that must be totally unique to rock and roll, a mother's auxiliary. The fan writes, I love you, not only for what you have made of yourself, but for what you are making of me. In this jam-packed Boston office, the mothers of the five new kids on the block run the group's fan club. They open and sort the mail more than 30,000 letters a month. 400,000 phone calls a month come into the new kids' 900 line. And teddy bears by the truck full are passed on to hospitals and daycare centers as the mothers try to live up to their newfound celebrity. Now, I was in the hairdresser today in Jordan Marsh, and people were walking up to me. I mean, it's like you're the famous one. Oh, oh, oh. On the downside, the new kids have been criticized. The funky mix of Jackson 5, Motown, New Edition, Elvis, and Beatlemania has not thrilled the critics, who charge the group as all hype and slick management. But the new kids on the block barely have time to notice. For the moment, they're not just new kids, they're the dream kids to most of America's teenage girls. We're just having fun with it. We're not letting it get to us get to our heads or letting it bog us down or, or anything we're just having fun and and living out a, a fantasy you know it's great <laughs> the new kids plan to sign a five and a half million <laughs>